Don't be shy, cause I, the life won't bring you down too far. This is Coogan Cassis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Delighted to be joined by former undisputed cruiserweight champion of Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus. <laughs> so, so you, 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 I tell you why you're, you're getting on, because it's taken us an hour and a half for you to get this done, to, to get the link together. And then on top of that, hold on a minute, I've got a guy outside. I've got a skip delivering, so I've got Elton. So he came in, <laughs> then you sent me the link without the password, then without the password, you sent me another link. We, it's like, you're losing it, son, you're losing it. You're losing it. I'm just letting you know, you need to watch out because those youngsters will take over from you. I'm just saying, I'm not causing trouble. I'm just middleman. Have you finished, have you finished with your little unnecessary rant? Oh, oh I'm bringing on. What, oh, what, what, you what, I'm all right, thank you. What's this talk you talking about? Sky B B T. What are you talking about? Did you not see uh, Queensbury's uh, press release yesterday? No. Oh, Johnny, what is wrong with you? It Johnny, was literally was the most talked about thing on social media in the last 24 hours, and you don't know about it. Tell me in there. Oh, what? Why do I have to do your own job for you? This is ridiculous. Listen, I, I'm talking about that. That then before we went on air, what's this about Sky BBT? I'm, what are you talking about? Right, okay, what? look, oh, I'm gonna give you the highlights, I'm gonna try and condense it down for you because I can't believe you don't know about this. You must be the only person in boxing that doesn't know about this, Jeffrey. Do you know? Do you know, Jeffrey? Right, <laughs> let me show you something, Jeff. <laughs> right, I'm gonna show you a poster, yeah. Oh, I saw that. I didn't pay attention to it. Okay. So basically, in summary, uh, Queensbury, Frank Warren put out uh, a press release yesterday um, that suggested that... I'm going to just read a little bit of it to you. It's a long statement, so I'll read a little bit to you. Okay. With sport on the whole creeping sluggishly out of enforced hibernation and attempting to establish a foothold in the world of the so-called new normal, how about lighten the touch paper and really bring British boxing back with a bang. The time is right now to throw off the shackles and truly give us for a proper shot in the arm. What I'm proposing is to break down the borders and give the fans what they want to see. Let's make the natural matches that have previously have been deemed too complicated due to promotional and broadcast affiliations. Oh, basically, it's to be versus match rooms, finest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so... Um, the fights that were outlined in this, obviously, yeah. there's the AJ Fury thing, but Dubois versus White, Yard versus Boatsy, nice. Joyce, Joyce versus Chisora, <laughs> Williams versus Demetrius Andre. Yeah. Now, nice. Okay. How would, how would that be broadcast? How, how would it work that? We'd share the broadcast. I'm assuming it would be a, a dual broadcast. It'd have to be, wouldn't it? Because they're, you're talking about the best fighters from each... Uh, promotion. Can, can I just can I just say? So I've actually worked with um, Frank Warren, and I think Frank Warren um, he he was he was Eddie Hearn today, not like Eddie because Frank blew Mickey Duff, Jarvis Stair, everybody out of the water. He was like bam on it, top dog. But it's the pyramid of life, and 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 then uh, the new kid on the block comes. I also worked with uh, Barry Hearn. You think Eddie's good? Barry was a don. Uh, I also worked with Barry Hearn, <clears throat> and then uh, and then I've seen Eddie come along. I think um, uh, I commend Frank Warren. I think Matt, Frank Warren made me a lot of money, and uh, he got me to 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 uh, position to fight for the world title, and, and I won it. And uh, I see Eddie Hearn come along, and I think Eddie Hearn. I I was big enough. I don't know why. I, I'm, anybody watching this? I don't work for Eddie. I don't get paid by Eddie. I'm not to do with Eddie. But I'm telling you now, this guy is the best hustler, the best promoter I have ever seen because he's wasted being rich. 
Because have you seen him when he goes to no press conference? He went blap, 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 fact, fixed. This guy fought that guy, that guy, and he's on it. And he doesn't even skip a beat. He's proper on it. And the other thing is this I think he, he's actually, I'm not saying Frank doesn't, on what I'm saying, Eddie does. He's very sociable with his fighters, he'll socialize with his fighters, where, where he just seems like one of the boys. Now, that might be his MO to, 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 to get the success or get the fighters or get, get the links that he's doing. But I've got to rate Eddie. I've got to rate him. I think he's probably one of the best promoters I've ever seen. Um, I mean, worldwide. And I'm, you, because this guy, don't care who, whose feathers he ruffles, he's just proper in it. Now, I know he's got his haters. He even embraces that. He's saying, come on, bring it on. So every time he's on, he gets booed. And, and, and I'm quite sure this is something that he, he probably relish. Again, Frank Warren, you, you don't, don't kick a dog when he's down because my man is smart. He's on it. He's got experience. And at one time, he was top dog. So to do this, you know, Frank's trick was time was everything. So that's one thing you've got to look out for Frank. So if he's on about doing this now, he's throwing the gauntlet down to say, let's do it. I'd like to see that because you're getting, you're getting uh, the, 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 the young lion against the old lion. I think it'd be a good one. I think these two, I think it would be nice. These two on the gloves are off. Nah, Eddie'd beat him. Eddie's mouth's too sharp, man. He'd, he'd beat him. All right, well, well, thanks for sucking Eddie Aaron off for the last five minutes. I'm not sucking off. I don't work. You no, work no, for I'm Eddie. Not, I'm I don't work just, for Eddie. No, cheers. It's I all right. I work for Eddie. Listen. So that's what, when, when people say you're, you're a, 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 a Herm fan, I'm, I'm like, joking. Really? I'm joking. Banter. Listen. It's all right. Listen. Whatever. Freedom of speech. <laughs> you're a sky man. Big up sky. Big up sky. <laughs> oh, what? You're a sky. You're, you're a sky man. Yeah, yeah, I am a Sky. Listen, you know what? I work for Sky, and they give me the opportunity to say what I want. That's what they do, and, and because Absolutely. I don't, I don't always, I don't always pick the matchroom fire. No, but I know you don't. But you got to listen. You got to back your team, and your team is Sky, and then underneath that matchroom, we're the Don. We're the Sky and the Don. Come on, come on. Look at the production. Look at the team. Come on. It'd be like. I can't say I can stand against Manu because that's really disrespectful. It'd be oh, like... <laughs> okay, look. Okay, listen. You're a Sky man. We get it. We get that you're loyal to your company. We love it. <laughs> we embrace it. Listen, I'm loyal to my people. I'm loyal to Sri Lankans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loyal to uh, IFL and MTK. All right, all right. I'm give loyal to these people. One. Sky, for almost 30 years, have been consistent... When it comes to what we love, which is boxing, it's been consistent. So you're not telling me a company like Sky, I'm a Sky boy, whatever, like Sky, would not have learned so much and understand to stay top of the game or run with it in the game for so long. They're consistent. Not BT, not, not, not BBC, not ITV, not Sports Network, not, not, not Box Nation, Sky. So we're doing something right. Oh, sorry. They're doing something right. <laughs> what I'm saying is, You've got to give credit where credit's due. But listen, listen, Johnny, you're right. Listen, like I said, you back your team, but everyone's doing their bit for boxing. The more the merrier. Yeah, yeah. It's true, isn't it? I, more, I love that. And I, I love, I love the more this, channels I love that get involved. Listen, whether it was Box Nation, BT, Sky, uh, ITV, whoever it is over here, the more channels getting involved in boxing, the more I, I, I actually we love have. This I actually fun. love this challenge that Frank has thrown out, thrown out and it reminds me. Do not underestimate him. Do not underestimate this man. So, some of the other fights that were listed in this poster, there was a second poster as well there. Uh, Charlie Edwards and Cal Yafai, Nathan Gordon Ooh. and Dave Allen, uh, Hamza Shiraz and Ted Cheeseman, Archie Sharp and uh, Zelfa Barrett, uh, Chris Jenkins and Conor Ben. Damn! I mean, look, the likely chances of even half of that card appearing on the same show is, I would say, is very slim. Why? What's Eddie said? You, you're close to Eddie. What's he said? Oh, actually, Umar's... I don't know. Umar's interviewed Eddie in the bubble today. So Come on, like, you and Eddie are like... Hot, like you're like Eddie, like, bat yeah, to each other. The you're the only person that can get out of Eddie whenever you want. What's yeah, Eddie said? I'm out Tell of the, the bubble. I'm out of the bubble. But the phone don't work. Yeah, but I knew Umar would get him today. I think Umar's already interviewed him today. But so you've know. not rang Eddie. You are telling me, look me now. You've not rang Eddie and spoke to him about this. What? Look, oh. I'm here, I'm here. Look at me, look at me. On the record or off the record? Off the record. I spoke to him last night, yeah. About this? Yeah. 
And what do you say? That's private. <laughs> That's private. That's pri- private information <laughs> that I'm not willing to share. But he would have done an interview about it today. So, yeah, we spoke on the phone <laughs> yesterday. But I'm out of the bubble. Umar's in the bubble, so he's doing it. But anyway, bottom line. Why to are you me, not doing it? Wait, wait. Let's back up. Why are you not doing it? Is it because you're in a position where you work with Frank and you work with Eddie, so you're trying to stay out, stay neutral? You know, like when we talk about Joshua against Fury, you're trying to stay neutral. Is it that because you're stuck in the middle? Company man Nelson. Listen. <laughs> Listen. I did fight camp last week. Come on. Johnny. Come on. Come on. You're fighting. <laughs> Johnny, I did fight camp last week. Umar's doing it next, uh, this week. You didn't even talk to me last week. You, you were like looking at me like I had a, I wasn't the, allowed to approach like, I was your like, area. You, you were like, I just saw you lighting up your cigarette. I'm like, no, oh, let's talk, man. You're like, I can't, I can't hear. What? No, what? Johnny, I wasn't allowed in your area. You and Anna Woolhouse and a select few others were in your own special bubble. Because you're <laughs> special people, you're in your own special bubble. So I wasn't allowed in that area. It's simple. All right. All right. You've got to follow the rules, Johnny. Yeah, hey, hey, I'll tell you that another thing. I've got to give it. It sounds like I'm a proper matron boy, but I, I'm, sure, I'm quite sure Big T did the same. But I'm telling you now, that setup down there, it was like the second you walked in, <clears throat> I put it this way, I pulled up in my car, the, in the car park. I had a load of stuff to go into the hotel. I couldn't carry it all at once. Security said, you know, once you go in, you've got to stay, you know, you can't come out for that, back out for that stuff. Then you had to go in your room. It's like being a sparring partner all over again. You were just stuck in room. I phoned it for room service. They weren't doing any hot food until after five o'clock. What have you got, sandwich? She said, all right. And the next minute, knock on the door. I open the door. Nobody's there. I see this woman running down the hall. A little sandwich in a packet on the floor. Yeah. I'm like, you, are you for real? So yeah. can you imagine being a fighter? That's, that's... What did uh, I say to you, though, Johnny? I, I couldn't get it. I, I didn't get it. I, I, I just said it. to you, when I see you, when you were arriving... I was walking past and you were waiting to come in. So I kind of yeah. saw you as you was coming in, but I didn't. And I just said to you, the one thing I said to you is, if you need anything, let me know and I'll, I'll leave Wait it. Wait on a minute. Door. Number one, why did you have a free pass? What? Why was you, why was you able to offer me help? Why were you locked in your room? Because I was... I'd already done the room looking on the, uh, on the Tuesday of fight week. I was free to roam around amongst other people that have been quarantining with. You just arrived there that day. You were just checking in your little uh, Dunlop suitcase. <laughs> yeah? You were just checking in your Dunlop suitcase. And as I was walking to my room, I saw you. And I, you, you remember me saying to you, I'll hook you up with something. I'll leave right, it. So if, I, if I'd have phoned you for some food, would you have gotten some food? I could have got you food, yes. No, no, that didn't say if you could have. I said, would you have gotten some food? Of course I would have. That's such a lie. That's such oh, a lie. Johnny, you, you'd have gone I'll to the shop have, and got me food. If you were a stranger, right, we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. Are you down If you were a stranger, I'd get you food. So don't start with all that. Wow. Are you, are you down this week? Next week. All right, we'll see you next week. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna film it on my phone. I'm gonna film the call. Yo, yo. Oh, cool. do you know what? Ooh. Johnny. I beep, 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 beep. Do you beep, know what? Beep. I've changed my mind. I ain't going to get you shit. Don't call me, yeah? <laughs> Ring someone else. Go. Uh, Johnny, just a reflection on uh, Fight Camp. You know what? I, wicked. It was wicked, I think. Uh, you couldn't have done anything else. The thing, the only thing, it's a pity the Ted Cheeseman fight and Sam Eggington fight was there was no crowd there. Because that fight was even, it was brutal, man. And these boys, they put their heart and soul on the line. And they were really giving it some. And I'm, I, was, I was taken aback. I thought, you know what? I've got to give it to you, boys. You're going to be in pain for days after, weeks after. <clears throat> but it was, a, it was a good setup. Well run. Uh, the only thing that was missing was crowds. Uh, but it was, uh, I liked it. I liked how it was the whole setup. Mm. It was a bit weird, wasn't it? It was like... I think the only bit that was seen normal in the night, obviously, aside from like the fighting in the ring, because when you're watching the fighting, you're watching it. But the, when he, when Cheeseman and Eggington done their walkouts and Hearn went right over the top New Year's Eve style with the fireworks, probably spent about hundred grand on fireworks. You know what I mean? <laughs> all the flames and all that. That felt like the nearest part of a show because on a big yeah. pay per view show, that's the sort of <clears> stuff that but, they but, do. Again, this part, this 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 side. 
I mean Frank as well as Eddie and all other promoters. This is the side that the public don't <clears throat> seem to get. So, so like, the promoters will get stick when they make money. But I'm quite sure when promoters are doing events like this, they're going to lose money. They're going to lose money because there's nobody there. But they've still got to get eyes on the prize. They've still got, got to get a TV audience involved so that they've got to invest in the future. And so being there, seeing the whole setup, uh, I thought it was run pretty well. Um, I, 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 it was run pretty well. It ran smooth. Yeah. The only thing I found weird, like I see Macklin, he was sitting about four miles away from Adam Smith. And then <laughs> you guys, you and Anna were like another three miles away. And it's weird because I could wave to you, but I couldn't even just come over and go, all right, Johnny, like normally as we chat. And I couldn't even yeah. interview you that night because you lot would have left and we left the, uh, one way and you lot, lot, lot would have left a different way. So... Man. It was weird, but I think for the people at home, again, it was something weird for them as well because there wasn't a crowd there, uh, and that's the difference. So now you're going to appreciate the true sport because sometimes when you hear the roar of a crowd when a punch is just missed, or maybe sometimes you listen to the commentary and, you, and if you turn it down, it's a different fight you're watching. Now that the, the public are watching this thinking, wow, you know, now they've got to appreciate what's in front of them. They're not swayed by the noise of the crowd. Uh, and, and, and the commentators have got to see and say exactly what they see and what you see. Uh, and they're not swayed by the noise of the crowd. So it, it's just, we've got to adapt to the new norm for now. What, uh, what, do, you, what do you think about the, the whole crowd noise on the telly? Everyone was having a little moan up. I personally, I personally wouldn't have. But I know you've got to have a bit of atmosphere and, you know, sometimes it's TV. You know, you've got to fill a little bit. I personally wouldn't have, but I was there. You know what I mean? And, and I'm, I'm an ex-fighter, so I, I, I get it. I think I don't need that. Um, and so some people, listen, you can't please everybody. Some are going to like it, some are going to love it. Another mad thing was, I was talking to Adam about it yesterday, that Cheeseman and Eggington had been like knocking lumps out of each other for 12 rounds. And then when they had to do their post-fight interview, they had to stand two metres apart. I yeah. mean, it's mad, isn't it? I mean, I, I get why. Obviously, you're following the, the boxing board rules and you've got to obviously do that to a T. But it just seemed weird, like a lot of people commenting on that, that these two had gone for an absolute war. And yeah. then when it comes to the post Yeah, and it's, a, it's a real contradiction. One there, one there. You think, yeah, it's a real contradiction, you think, I don't get that. Uh, <clears throat> but <clears throat> it rules are rules. And that's oh. why, hopefully, you know, this will run down. So, so watching that, the other night, you remember the other week when I said to you, I'd be surprised if I see Joshua fighting this year or Fury fighting this year. Can you understand why? You know, you, you couldn't have such big hitters fighting uh, without there being a crowd there. Uh, so it's a case of how things would pan out. Uh, Dillian's doing it with Povetkin, so... Yeah, but... That's a good test, I think, kind of, you know... It's a, it's a, a great test, but I, do, I realistically... level to see. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I realistically can't see... I couldn't see Fury or, or Joshua... <clears throat> uh, doing that and letting uh, letting that kind of go, door go because a lot of money's made on the gate. Uh, Dylan, you know Dylan. Dylan just wants to fight. He's like, chill, come now. And he's like, let's do it. So, uh, but these guys, it's, it's business. It's big business as well. So, any of these fight weeks, are you going to come in and stay the whole week, like pay per view week? Are you last week, in? the last week. Yeah, the last week I'm doing. So that. we're going to be in the hotel all week together. But you can't come in my room. Oh, listen to this one. I won't tell any names, but two, two, a trained on his fighter. So these guys are training together. <clears throat> um, they were in the hotel playing some football game together. The security heard them. Boom, boom, boom on the door. Dragged the trainer out. Said, no. Nah. He's like, it's my fight. No, out. So you just cannot. You've got to stay in your room by yourself. Uh, and, and they didn't understand the, the, the seriousness of it. He said, look, the whole show would be in jeopardy. If everybody did this out, they had to dash him out of the room. It was funny, uh, but it's just I like the strictness. I like I like I like that they, they they were cautious on every level. I think uh, I get it. I totally get it. Um, uh, it's just as it is. You just got it. But we like little, we don't like little school kids being told to get to your room. But uh, I spoke to Matthew Macklin afterwards, and I said, "Did it remind you of being a sparring partner?" Because usually, if it goes to some dread place like like. Uh, the, um, I don't know Frankfurt Order uh, in Germany. You'd be like in your you're in your hotel room and he's just waiting to go to the gym. You ain't going for a walk because you're out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you're bored. You ain't even got TV, and that's what it was like. I'm thinking, shit. I thought this was over years ago. 
but he's, he's that kind of vibe. Certain fighters are going to be in there for nearly two weeks in that fight, in that, in that right. whole locked in the hotel. I don't get that. Right. It's a mad old time. Um, but yeah, Dillian White, uh, Povetkin, that's like the icing on the cake of this fight camp, which is going to approach very quickly. It's uh, two weeks on Saturday. A uh, thousand days, me and you talk about Dillian White all the time. Um, I'm assuming after that night, if Dillian is successful against Povetkin, we hope he is, that it's interesting to see what will happen regarding the WBC mandatory situation. Okay, I'm going to do my crystal ball thing. Thing. <laughs> yeah, where did you just go? Oh, and I'm going to say that Tyson Fury will vacate his title and Dillian fights somebody else for it. Crystal ball, man. Okay. What? If Fury gets promoted to being a franchise champion? I don't know. That's all I see happening. I can see, I can see it from day one that that can happen. Do you think Fury, do you think Fury will end up vacating the WBC in order to make the fight with Joshua? I don't know what you know. But in order to, yeah, but that's the only know, reason for Fury to want to do that. Because why would well, Fury man, make the title? Hey, don't, he don't, hey, yo, you're talking to me like a teacher. All right, cool. No problem. I agree with you. I'm just saying that's all I see happening. I see uh, White uh, White fighting for it, for a vacant title. Wow. I need to be your girlfriend, man. You just that's not a frown and you can cuss people it. out. Give you time to talk. Wow, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe I would say it if you took me out once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> you were busy with all your work in there. Right. Anyway. <laughs> okay, well, Johnny, I've uh, taken enough of your time this uh, beautiful Wednesday morning. Can you hear that banging here? Can you hear it? What is that? I've got lodgers. Really? No one's going to live with you. I put you. an ad in the paper the other day and uh, some people that claim to be related to you knocked on the door this morning. What? <laughs> what do you mean, Northerners? <laughs> We're related to Johnny Nelson. <laughs> he said we could come round here for some, some ginger <laughs> beer and coconut <laughs> milk. I don't know if you drink that. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great. That's a great Scottish accent. Scottish accent. Do you have a London accent again, then? Eh? We are London accent. I do. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Here, Johnny. Johnny, come on, come and do this interview. Come on, come on. Stop messing about, man. Right. Let me teach you some. <laughs> Repeat on. after me, all right? Yeah. All right, fella. How are you doing? All right, fella, how you doing? Do you want some of this, mate? Smash your fucking teeth in, geezer. <laughs> what? Do you want some of this, mate? Smash your fucking teeth in, geezer. That is terrible. That is Shut terrible. up. You, you, you see what's the problem with you summoners? You don't pronounce the words. You slipped your, your fucking teeth in, mate. What's that mean? Write it down. Put the words down. Me ram your teeth down your throat. <laughs> <laughs> again so we go back to the Scottish accent again you see <laughs> Johnny Nelson thank you very much for talking to IFL TV um, make sure everyone tunes in to Sky Sports this Friday, Friday. night Friday night Terry, Terry Harper gets Natasha Jones who are you going for oh my god oh, I'm going to go for Natasha I'm going for Natasha me and Matthew Macklin have got it on, on uh, we had it on the debate show and when Natasha wins I'm going to turn around to him and say yo Show me the money. Oh, I can't do that. I'm not allowed to gamble. Yo! I like, I like Natasha. Uh, good opportunity for Natasha, but Terry Harper's come on so much in the last it's couple just, of years. She's done brilliantly. Um, shot man ride donkey. Just weird. We've got Fowler against Harper. Bill Smith yeah. and Thorley. Good fight. Uh, David Price. No, da David Caldwell's fighter, Hopi Price. David Hopi Price. Price. Oh, I just got them, got them mixed in together. <laughs> Uh, against Johnny Phillips and Akeem Fiaz against Kane Baker. Yeah, Akeem Fiaz, what is he, 5 and 0? Kane Baker. Yeah, Jamie Moore's prospect. guy. Yeah, hot yeah. prospect. Yeah, he's a hot prospect. Not bad coming through, keep an eye on him. We'll see what goes like. All right, then, brother. Peace. Thank you very much. Talk to us. Keep, keep it real, keep it real.
See ya.